Hi, I'm Mark. This is my December review for Pisces Sunshine and Pisces Rising. We've got a couple of big events uh, mid-month, which I'll tell you about shortly. But at the start of the month, there's going to be a few ups and downs. A few good days, a few not so good days. Uh, on the first, Mercury makes a positive aspect to Saturn. And this is a time when you can review things. You can review uh, your goals, because Saturn's in your 11th house. You can review your friendships and your colleagues and see if they need uh, any attention. See if there's changes that can be made there. Then, on the fourth, it's a, a rather difficult day because you've got an aspect between um, the Moon and Saturn. Uh, this could be a day when you just don't feel like doing a lot. The Moon and the Saturn will both be at 29 degrees, which is what we call anoretic. It means they are particularly weakened and they're just ready to jump into the next sign. So this is a day when there's not a lot of energy around and you will feel a little bit lethargic and not wanting to do a lot. On the 5th, it's a good day because you've got Venus making a trine aspect to Neptune who's in your sign in your first house. So this is fantastic for creativity, for stirring up the imagination. It's a very spiritual day as well. You'll feel very compassionate and feel a lot of spiritual love for people. Um, it's a very creative day. Uh, it's also a good day to spend uh, with your relationship. If you're not in a relationship, then it's a good day to meet someone. And it could be a possible soulmate you could meet on a day like this. Then, um, on the 9th, it's another tricky day because the Sun makes a square to Neptune, so this isn't so nice. Um, it could go either way, it could be that it fires you up and um, your Neptune creativity and imagination is fired up again, or you could be a bit lethargic. You could have one of those days when you, something's wrong with you but you don't actually know what it is, you can't put your finger on it. Um, but don't worry, it will pass and uh, all will be good. Between the 10th and the 14th, Mars will be very energised. The Sun makes a positive aspect to them and he makes a positive aspect to the North Node. So this is a power point in, uh, in time where he's really energised. So this is a time to um, get hold of this energy and do something with it. Um, put in 100% whatever it is, if there's any unfinished projects or jobs, you need to do them. Um, Mars is in your second house, so it's, it's all to do with finances as well. So you need to put any um, financial plans into, into operation and do things that will earn you money, make you money in the future. Go at it 100%. Don't worry what anyone else is doing, just you get on and do it and channel this energy wisely. It's also connected to the North Node, so this is something here to do with your way forward. This is your um, path in the future, so anything that comes up that you can direct the Mars energy into that path will be fantastic. On the 13th, uh, we have a major event. We have Jupiter and Saturn coming together for the last time um, in an Earth sign, because they'll be entering a new cycle of 200 years in, in air signs. Now this only happens about once every 25 years, so it's not an everyday occurrence. Now, they are um, forming in your 11th house, but they will be marching together into your 12th house and into the sign of Aquarius. Now this to me denotes that we will then finally be wholly in the age of Aquarius. Now that might be sad for you Pisceans, because it means it's really coming to the end of your Piscean age. Um, in four years time, Neptune will leave your sign, and I think that will mark the complete end of the Piscean age. But the Aquarian age is very excitable because Jupiter, your um, original ruler or co-ruler, is very, um, very active in Aquarius. Jupiter gets on well in Aquarius. So this will be good. This will be your 12th house. So this is a, this is a new age of, of the unconscious. This is when you can really get in, in, in touch with the psychic side as well. Because you are very intuitive, Pisces, so you, you can use this to your advantage. You can gain great enlightenment over the next year of Jupiter in that in that Aquarius sign before um, the year after in 2022 when Jupiter will be in your first house in your sign and that's even better. So the next year is a lot about working behind the scenes and taking advantage of things that are in the background because Saturn will be in there as well. Saturn is about planning. Saturn is about forming a, a, a structure, forming a, a regime that will 
work and will stand up to the test of time. On the 14th, we have our second major event in two days. This is a solar eclipse and it's in the uh, 10th house in Sagittarius. This eclipse is part of the Saros South 4 series and it's very fated. It's very linked to destiny, this eclipse. It's also a very strongly emotional eclipse. So what does it mean? Well, in your 10th house, uh, this eclipse means you now have to take authority. You now have to take charge of your life. Either that or you surrender. Um, there's going to be a lot of responsibility coming your way and it could be either in your career or on your chosen path, on your destined path. This eclipse is going to align you with your path now so that you can go forward and you may have to take a lot more responsibility not only for yourself but for others as well. This could affect relationships at work and at home. Eclipses are wild cards, you never know whether they're going to bring good news or it's going to be bad news. So you have to wait and see, but if you're, if you're following your path and you're on the right path, it's more likely to be good news. Bad news only comes when you're on the wrong path and you have to be realigned. On the 15th, we have a joining of the Black Moon Lilith and Uranus. Now these two don't have an awful lot in common, but one thing they do share in common is the fact that they don't like restrictions. They like freedom. This is happening in your third house. So this is freedom to communicate for you. Freedom to think how you wish. Freedom to learn what you wish. What will happen with these two together is that they will change, subtly change circumstances around you that you probably won't even realise. So that you'll be nudged in the right position. So you're in the right place at the right time. On the 18th, Saturn moves into Aquarius and the whole process of advancement, uh, gaining knowledge and progress begins. For you Pisces, a lot of the knowledge will be inner knowledge because it's in the 12th house. Then on the 19th, uh, Venus makes a trine aspect to uh, uh, Chiron, the healing planet, in your second house finances. Venus is in the 10th house career. So now is a chance to heal a wound to do with your career or your path um, whereby you didn't feel you were good enough or maybe you were rejected. This may have had an effect on finances as well. On the 20th, Jupiter moves into Aquarius and starts the whole process of growth and expansion. But on the 21st, we've got a few difficult days to get over because we said Mars is in your second house and pushing forward this month, well he's got a little obstacle to overcome because he makes a square to Pluto. And Mars and Pluto cause friction. It's not always easy with Mars and Pluto. There's tension, there's difficulties to overcome. But if you're on the right track, everything should go smoothly and you can keep channeling that energy into whatever you're doing. If you come up against difficult situations, power struggles, then you know you have to make alterations. You know you have to overcome things. The thing is not to get frustrated, not to get locked in battles. Um, channel the energy well. Don't let the energy build up because you'll get frustrated and when you're frustrated accidents can happen. So if you can't resolve a problem put your energy into something else. Maybe some exercise something to use up that energy to stop it from bubbling over. On the 22nd the Sun and Mercury together move into uh, Capricorn in your 11th house. The 11th house is about networking, it's about colleagues, friends, um, acquaintances. When the Mercury is with the Sun, it's great for communication. You can express yourself in such a good way. So this is a great time to um, get along with people. It's also uh, about goals in the 11th house. So you need to review your goals and check that your goals are up to date and are in keeping with what you now want to do. And use the cardinal energy of Capricorn to initiate things, to get things going. Um, and you have a whole month to use this energy. On the 25th, the Sun makes an aspect to uh, uh, Chiron in the second house of finances. So now you can have a, a new look at a, an old problem and see it with different eyes and have, take a new perspective and then hopefully solve that problem. Between the 27th and the 29th, 
um, the Sun aspects the Uranus uh, Black Moon Lilith conjunction which we spoke about earlier. Now the Sun will shine a light and uncover the whole um, area between these two. That you'll be able to see what's going on, you'll be able to see uh, the truth of the matter here. Be, this will all be highlighted and Uranus will help you make the necessary changes. It's an exciting time, Uranus likes change, it wants change. It's exciting to have this change, um, so you'll be able to see what needs doing. On the final two days of the year, uh, Venus makes two aspects, uh, one to Neptune in your first house and one to uh, the south node. Venus is in your tenth house uh, of destiny and career. Um, so this is when you can think of new ideas now. You may be able to harness old talents uh, that you've had, um, put them to use in a new, in a new way, in a new career, on a new, on a new pathway. Neptune's very creative with Venus. It's a very artistic, creative, and spiritual um, aspect here. And the South Node is about our past. It's about our past lives. So maybe talents you have that you're not even aware of that Venus could help you uh, highlight now and and use for your for your benefit. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you'd like more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a comment, I'll be glad to hear from you.